Okay. So, why don't you tell me your name and uh, what you do? Yeah, you bet. My name is Mike Green. I'm a realtor here in Springfield, Missouri. Okay. And uh, how did you get into realtor? <laughs> You know, I really enjoy what I do. Uh, I, I think it was something that uh, I was really drawn to. I really enjoy helping people with what is often their largest investment. So it doesn't really matter whether you own a million dollar home or a $20,000 home. It's usually the bulk of your wealth is tied up in that property. So it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy helping people manage that investment. When did you start doing it? I actually got in the worst part of the economy. So back in 2009, January 1 of 2009, that year I actually uh, was rookie of the year, uh, but uh, it was it had to be the worst time. In that amount of time, there's been uh, well over 1,500 realtors that have gotten out of the business, and I've moved to the top 3% of all realtors in our area. So, uh, Have you always been in Springfield? I've lived in Springfield for a long time, probably about 30 years now, but uh, before that lived in, in Urbana, original from Corpus Christi, Texas. So, but I love it here. It's a, it's a great place to live and to raise a family, for sure. Yeah. Um, so, do you, I, I, I don't know much about realty. I mean, how, mm -hmm. what do you, um, do you choose your own homes? Do you, how does that process work? Well, it's a pretty interesting process. So, it depends on whether you're a buyer or a seller. So, assuming that you're talking about the buyer side of the transaction, then um, you know, usually what I do is I try to set up a situation that's called a power search. And that's where we sit down and actually visit. And I do a lot of listening. I ask a few questions, try to find out exactly what it is that you're looking for. But uh, mostly it's about listening to really understand uh, what it is that, that motivates you, what you're, what you're really wanting. And from that, then we're able to kind of work through the database and match together what things are available that's along the lines of what you want. And then, um, then we actually narrow the list down to probably about 10 properties or so and go and look at them. We can usually see them all in about three hours. And my experience is that uh, after you see those uh, 10, you're usually able to find one that you like. Yeah. Uh, so, aside from realty, mm -hmm. what else do you do? What, what does Mike Green do for fun? <laughs> you know, I work a ton. Uh, fortunately, I enjoy my work, so, uh, you know, that's probably where I spend the bulk of my time. But in my off time, uh, you know, I've got a condo at the lake and a, and a sailboat, and I really enjoy doing that. And then you know, we travel a little bit, uh, try to get out of the country from time to time, and yeah, it's a lot of fun. Any, uh, you know, success stories that, you know, really stand out um, throughout your career? You know, um, I have just had a fantastic time working with the people that I work with. Um, I am, get constant uh, referrals, uh, and that's probably one of the most important parts of my business. Um, I am built around referrals, and you know, so I'm very honored that, that not only did the transaction go well, but that the people that I worked with felt good enough to refer me again in the future. So that's, that's probably what I strive for the most. So it's a success story on every individual one. I mean, when I'm helping a young couple get their first home and they're kind of like a babe in the woods and not too sure of what they're doing and so it feels really good to be able to help them make that transition and, and you know, move out of an apartment or move out of mom and dad's house into, uh, uh, into their first home. So, you know, that even a, even a small transaction like that is definitely a success story. Uh, about my family, I know I look incredibly young, but I've actually been married for 35 years. Uh, yeah, 35 years. And I have a daughter, and she works with me, fantastic assistant, so glad to, to have her. And she's just had a little baby, four months old, I think yesterday, four months old. So, yeah, have a, have a great time with our family. And do you feel like having a family, you can kind of really uh, share what a family would need? for uh, a home or a new home. Absolutely. So I try to listen to what a buyer is looking for and, and, and really pay attention to what their unique needs are. And every buyer is, is, is absolutely different. So, you know, even when I categorize someone as a first time home buyer, you know, there's a first time home buyer that is really into a, a modern type of look and who wants close to the college. So there's all these little nuances. And so it is definitely a, a game. Uh, to, to listen and make sure that I hit the nail on the head for each individual client. So, you know, having a family, yes, that does help when I'm working with people with, uh, with families and I can certainly uh, relate uh, to what their specific situation is, but when it's somebody else, you know, you, you have to kind of remember back what it was like to be a, you know, a young kid buying for the first time. So tell me about Andrew and Laura. <laughs> you know, they're a great couple and I really enjoyed working with them. 
But I'll tell you the truth from the beginning, I knew there was going to be a little bit of a problem, and here's the reason why. So they called me up for the first time, and we met out at this historic home and in the historic district. And, uh, you know, we toured the home and had a chance to show them all the information and everything. And then whenever we got done, it got to talking to them a little bit. They decided they didn't like that house. And the more we talked, the more that they told me that they really preferred newer homes. And all I could think was, well, then why are we in the middle of this historic district with these historic homes? So, you know, that didn't, that didn't make a lot of sense. But they really were. They were, they were great to work with. And, um, you know, we had to do a lot of talking. This transaction took a year to finish. Uh, and normally that doesn't take nearly that long. But in all fairness, there were a lot of breaks uh, where they stopped and, uh, you know, worked to uh, be able to uh, uh, build up more money so they could buy a better and better house. And they even took a little bit of time out to get married. So, you know, that was, uh, that was a pretty worthwhile reason uh, to stop. So as we got deeper into the process, uh, we, would, we would see this dichotomy of homes. We would go and see these uh, older homes uh, and then we go and see the newer homes. So I'd show the newer homes that they said they wanted, and they'd call me up and they'd say, well, you know, can we see this older home or that older home? I'm like, okay, well, this drives me a little crazy, but no, they were, they were fun to work with. Okay, go for it. Okay, so I have to tell you something that's a little bit more uh, interesting. What made this one just a, a little bit different? Um, Andrew is a little bit more uh, scientific and precise and has a little bit better idea of the statistical reason why he wants to buy a house, whereas Laura maybe is just a little bit more emotional. So what I found is as we would go into certain houses, she would just look at a house and she'd say, oh my gosh, I love this house, which is normally what you want to hear, right? But then we go into the next house and she'd go, okay, forget everything I said about the last house. I love this house. This house is better. So, you know, after about five or six houses like that, I'm going, wow. I can't, I don't know how to read her, I don't know how to gauge this, uh, this process, but we finally found the one that was the right one. One thing that I found pretty interesting about this was that they seem to have a, um, a desire for the 70s styles home. Well, I'll tell you what, I lived in the 60s and 70s and I'm kind of burnt out on those homes, so it was really hard for me to get excited about these older homes that, uh, you know, that they, you know, they call them, what's that word? Retro. Character and retro, and I thought, you know, I wonder if they see me as character or retro, you know, I wonder if I'm just that far separated from the modern society. One of the things that they were saying that they liked were the, the homes from the 60s and the 70s, and they really referred those as having style and character and, you know, being very retro, and it really kind of made me think about myself. So, you know, does that mean I have style and character and I'm really retro? I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Kind of had a struggle with that. What was it? Oh, so one of the things that they kept saying was, well, I kind of like the idea of uh, maybe doing a little bit of a, a fixer-upper, but then when we would go into the homes that need a little bit of fixing up, I don't know that they both agreed that they were willing to do that. So if the house was a little bit rougher condition, she wasn't as excited about it. And uh, it seemed like when the house was in a little bit of worse condition, then he started to get more and more excited about it. Wheelchair, accessibility. Yeah. Mother-in-law. Yeah, that's right. But well, part of it we have in our written notes that we're sending it to him too, so. Hey, Kirsten. Yeah, you're just supposed to have like a five to ten minutes. Right, right. Yeah. But it's just going to be, if I talk best about the wheelchair, then he'll okay. send that. So okay. it's just a lot of content. So the last thing about the wheelchair. Okay. So one of the things that was really important in, in searching for this particular home was that it had to have some wheelchair accessibility. So when we go to some of these homes that had just a... Uh, the real tall entrance and uh, the stairs that go way up, you know, it may look great, but that's just not going to work for this particular situation. So we had to be really careful. Hi, welcome to New Home. Come on in. So some of the things I want to be sure and point out to you are some of the fantastic features that they have here. First of all, notice the cathedral ceilings, the 12 by 12 uh, uh, exposed beams are just fantastic. Down here we have the fireplace with just these beautiful corbels uh, holding the mantle up, and this is a pass-through fireplace right here. But when you come around to this side, of course you can see that this is just a little bit more retro, a little bit more French country. You can see all the soldiered brick uh, stepped across the top of the fireplace, so yeah, that's really nice. Now the ceiling effects here are fantastic. This is a, uh, a box beam 
uh, ceiling and over here we have the granite countertops, stainless appliances and uh, pinstripe uh, on the cabinets. This is one feature I think you're really going to like though. This is the recessed spice drawer. Everything you could possibly want right there all nice and handy. Of course we have the Bosch uh, six burner stove and your own pot filler so whenever you decide to have that Italian cuisine it's right there it's ready for you. But this is probably one of the things I think everybody has to have okay. Your own appliance elevator. Is that not just fantastic? I, I think everybody should have one of those. And you can tell that that is pretty easy to not only bring up to put away as well. Working away around the kitchen, of course, a nice uh, double sink there, and then the double oven. So this is a fantastic home, uh, hand scraped floors, you're absolutely going to love it.